The campfire flickered, casting an eerie glow on the faces of the group of campers huddled around it. They were deep in the woods, miles from civilization, with only their tents and a few supplies to keep them alive. The air was still, and the only sounds were the occasional hoot of an owl and the crackle of the fire. Suddenly, a twig snapped in the darkness beyond the light of the fire. The campers froze, their eyes wide with fear. They knew they weren't alone. Did you guys hear that? Whispered Jake, the leader of the group. Yeah, what was it? Asked Sarah, her voice trembling. I don't know, said Jake, but we need to be prepared for anything. Keep your weapons close. The campers had brought knives and other tools for protection, but they knew they were no match for whatever was out there. They sat in tense silence for what felt like hours, waiting for the creature to make its move. Finally, they heard it again. This time, it was closer, and they could hear the sound of heavy breathing. They could feel the ground shake beneath them as the creature approached. Get ready, Jake whispered. It's here. The creature burst into the clearing, its massive form towering over the campers. It had sharp claws and glowing eyes, and its breath was hot and fetid. The campers screamed and scrambled for their weapons, but the creature was too fast. It lunged at them, and they scattered in all directions, running blindly through the woods. Help! Screamed Sarah. Somebody help me. But no one could hear her over the sounds of chaos and terror. The creature pursued them relentlessly, slashing and tearing at anything in its path. Finally, exhausted and injured, the survivors regrouped at the edge of a cliff. The creature was still hot on their trail, and there was nowhere left to run. We have to fight, said Jake, his voice shaking. We have to stand our ground. The campers braced themselves, their weapons at the ready. The creature charged at them, its claws gleaming in the moonlight. They fought with all their might, but it was no use. The creature was too powerful. One by one, the campers fell, until only Jake was left standing. He stood his ground, facing the creature with a fierce determination. But as the creature closed in on him, Jake realized that he was no match for it. With a final roar, the creature lunged at him, and everything went dark. The next morning, a search party found the campsite in shambles. Tents were torn to shreds, and there was blood everywhere. The campers were never seen again, and the creature remained a mystery, haunting the woods for years to come. But the story doesn't end there. Years later, a new group of campers decided to venture into those same woods, not knowing the danger that lurked there. As they set up camp, they heard whispers among the trees, and the feeling of being watched overwhelmed them. What do you think it could be? Asked Mia, her voice trembling. I don't know, replied Alex, trying to sound brave. But we have to stick together and be prepared for anything. As the sun set, the group gathered around the fire, telling stories and laughing nervously. But then they heard a growling sound that sent chills down their spines. Suddenly, the trees began to shake, and a huge shadow appeared in the darkness. What is that? yelled Jeremy. It's the monster, cried Mia. The creature charged at them, and they scrambled to grab their weapons. Alex was the first to face it, but his knife was no match for its strength. Run, he yelled, as the creature threw him to the ground. The others ran blindly through the woods, trying to find a way out. But the monster was always one step ahead of them. Help me, cried Emily, as the creature closed in on her. But then they heard a voice, coming from deep in the woods. Over here, hurry. They followed the voice and found an old cabin, hidden among the trees. The door was locked, but they managed to break it down. Inside, they found an old man, with a long white beard and a staff. What's going on? Asked Jeremy, panting heavily. I've been living in these woods for years, said the old man. And I've seen that monster before. It's been hunting anyone who comes into these woods, looking for prey. What can we do? Asked Emily. You have to fight it, said the old man. But not with weapons. You have to face it with your willpower. Believe in yourselves, and you can defeat it. The group didn't know what to think but they knew they had nothing left to lose. They ventured back into the woods, determined to face the monster head on. And as it charged at them, they stood their ground, channeling their courage and strength. They yelled and screamed, and the monster recoiled, as if it was afraid of their power. And then, with a final roar, it disappeared into the darkness, never to be seen again. The group returned to the cabin, and the old man congratulated them. You have done what no one else has ever done, he said. You have defeated the monster and saved yourselves. As they left the woods the next day, the group knew that they had learned a valuable lesson. Sometimes, 
The most powerful weapon we have is our own willpower and determination. And they knew that they would never forget that night in the woods, where they had faced their deepest fears and emerged victorious. As they walked back to civilization, they couldn't help but feel a sense of camaraderie and accomplishment. We did it, exclaimed Mia, a huge smile on her face. I can't believe we actually survived that, said Alex, still catching his breath. Jeremy nodded in agreement. I don't think I'll ever forget that night, he said. But I'm glad we went through it together. As they reached their cars, they said their goodbyes, promising to keep in touch and never forget what they had accomplished. But little did they know, their victory was short-lived. The monster they had defeated was not alone, there were more of its kind, lurking in the shadows, waiting for their next prey. And as the group drove away, the creatures watched them, their eyes glowing in the darkness, a reminder that the woods were never truly safe. The end? Or just the beginning of a new nightmare? Only time will tell. Days turned into weeks, and the group slowly began to move on from their terrifying experience in the woods. But deep down, they all knew that something wasn't right. Mia was the first to notice it. She began having nightmares, vivid dreams of the creature they had faced in the woods, except now, there were more of them. They chased her through the forest, and she could feel their hot breath on her neck. She tried to shake it off, but the nightmares only got worse. I don't know what's happening to me, she confided in Alex. But I feel like I'm losing my mind. Alex tried to reassure her, but he too had been feeling uneasy. He would wake up in the middle of the night, convinced that he could hear something scratching at his window. But when he looked outside, there was nothing there. Jeremy had his own fears to deal with. He would often find himself looking over his shoulder, convinced that he was being followed. And the slightest noise would make his heart race. They tried to talk to each other about their fears, but it only made things worse. They were all too afraid to admit that the monster they had faced in the woods had left a lasting impact on them. But then, one night, they received a message. It was a picture, sent anonymously, of a creature that looked just like the one they had defeated. This can't be happening, muttered Mia, as she stared at the image on her phone. We have to do something, said Alex, determination in his voice. They agreed to meet at the old cabin in the woods, the one where they had met the old man who had given them the strength to face the monster before. As they walked towards the cabin, they could feel the tension rising. But they knew that they had to face their fears head on if they wanted to have any chance of defeating the creatures that were now haunting them. When they reached the cabin, they found the old man waiting for them. I knew you would come back, he said, a hint of sadness in his voice. I've been waiting for you. The group explained their situation to the old man showing him the picture they had received. I see, said the old man, nodding slowly. These creatures are not to be underestimated. They are the guardians of the woods, and they will stop at nothing to protect it. But what can we do? Asked Jeremy. We can't just sit here and wait for them to come for us. The old man looked at them, his eyes filled with wisdom. You have faced these creatures before and emerged victorious. But this time, you must face them again. And this time, you must do it together. Your willpower and determination will be your greatest weapon. The group took a deep breath, knowing that there was no turning back now. As they ventured back into the woods, they could feel the eyes of the creatures on them. But this time, they were not alone. They stood back to back, ready to face whatever came their way. And when the creatures charged at them, they yelled and screamed, channeling their strength and courage. It was a fierce battle, but in the end, the creatures were defeated. They vanished into the darkness, and the group was left standing there, triumphant. We did it, yelled Mia, a huge grin on her face. We really did, said Alex, looking around at the others. Jeremy nodded in agreement. We faced our fears, and we emerged stronger because of it. As they walked back to their cars, they knew that they had truly defeated the monsters that had haunted them. They had faced their fears head on and had come out on top. And this. And this time, they were ready to leave the woods behind, to move on with their lives, and to put the nightmare of the monsters to rest once and for all. As they drove away from the woods, a sense of relief washed over them. They had faced their fears and come out stronger. But they also knew that they would never forget what they had been through. We did it, said Mia, smiling at the others. Never again, said Alex, shaking his head. Agreed, said Jeremy, still catching his breath. But I have to admit, I kind of feel like a badass now. They all laughed, happy to be alive and happy to have each other. As they reached the edge of the woods, they stopped the cars and got out. They looked back at the forest, wondering if the creatures were still out there, watching them. But this time, 
They were ready. They had faced their fears and come out victorious. And they knew that they could face anything, as long as they had each other. Goodbye, Woods, said Mia, waving at the trees. We won't be seeing you again. And with that, they got back in their cars and drove away, leaving the darkness and the monsters behind, and looking forward to a future filled with hope and courage. As they drove away from the woods, the tension slowly began to dissipate, and the group settled into a comfortable silence. But just as they were about to reach the main road, they heard a loud banging noise coming from the trunk of Alex's car. What the hell is that? Asked Mia, her voice filled with fear. Alex pulled over to the side of the road and got out of the car. He cautiously walked towards the trunk, unsure of what he was about to find. He slowly opened the trunk, and the group's worst fears were realized. Inside, they found the remains of the monster they had defeated in the woods, torn apart and disfigured. Oh my god, whispered Jeremy, staring at the gruesome scene. We have to get rid of this, said Alex, his voice filled with determination. They quickly grabbed shovels from the trunk of their cars and began digging a hole by the side of the road. As they buried the remains of the monster, they all knew that they would never forget what they had been through. The memory of the creature would stay with them forever, a reminder of the horrors that lay just beyond the edge of the woods. But they also knew that they had each other, and that they were stronger because of it. And as they drove away from the site, they felt a sense of peace and closure. We did it, said Mia, a sense of pride in her voice. We really did, said Alex, nodding in agreement. And as they drove away from the woods, they knew that they had overcome their fears, and that they were ready for whatever challenges lay ahead. As they drove away, the moon rose high in the sky, casting a pale light over the road. The group sat in silence, each lost in their own thoughts. But then, Jeremy spoke up. You know what guys, I think I want to go back to the woods, he said. Mia and Alex looked at him, surprised. What? Are you crazy? Asked Mia. No, hear me out, said Jeremy. I think we need to go back and face our fears again. I mean, we've proven that we can handle anything that comes our way, right? Alex nodded slowly, considering Jeremy's words. You know what? I think you're right, he said. Let's do it. Let's go back and face our fears once more. Mia looked at the two of them, unsure. Are you guys serious? She asked. But then she saw the determination in their eyes, and she knew that they were. All right, she said, smiling. Let's do it. And with that, they turned the car around and headed back towards the woods, ready to face whatever lay ahead. As they drove, they talked about their plans, and how they would defeat the monsters once and for all. They laughed and joked, filled with a sense of excitement and adventure. And as they reached the edge of the woods, they all took a deep breath and stepped out of the car. We can do this, said Jeremy, his voice filled with confidence. And with that, they stepped into the darkness, ready to face their fears and emerge victorious once again.